What's up this is Pat the Resident Game God here to bring you Movie Gods, a series dedicated to movie reviews and discussions. That's right, in the Game Gods tradition, here's movies up your ass. Let's to the of the the ever to reach our screen. the finest stars and exciting performances. We'll thrill to the suspense, comedy, romance, and drama of world famous stories. Three years after the events of the previous film, the Jurassic World theme park on Isla Nubler has been abandoned. A mercenary team arrives on the island to retrieve DNA from the corpse of the Indominus Rex, which lies at the bottom of the Mosaurus Lagoon. Despite the Mosaurus destroying their submersible, the mercenaries successfully acquire a bone from the corpse. They flee when the park's Tyrannosaurus attacks, consequently leaving the lagoon gate open for the Mosaurus to escape into the ocean. More on the Mosaurus later. On the mainland a U.S. Senate hearing debates whether Isla Nubler's dinosaurs should be saved from an impending volcanic eruption. Dr. Ian Malcolm argues the dinosaurs should be left to die. Here's where the similarities between the Lost World and Fallen Kingdom begin. We have Ian Malcolm making an appearance and we all remember how he was the main protagonist of the Lost World. God. Remember how awkwardly he called out for his girlfriend in that movie? Sarah! 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 Jurassic World's former manager Claire Deering has formed the Dinosaur Protection Group to save the dinosaurs, with help from former park technician Franklin and paleo veterinarian Zia. Zia is annoying and kind of a bitch. Franklin, oh my god, Franklin. He's probably one of the most annoying characters in cinematic history next to George R. Binks. After the Senate rejects rescue of the dinosaurs, Claire is contacted by Benjamin Lockwood, John Hammond's former partner in creating the dinosaur cloning technology. Now here's the second similarity. She goes to a mansion to see Lockwood just like Malcolm went to see John Hammond in The Lost World. In fact, Richard Attenborough died in 2014, a year before Jurassic World hit theaters. If he were alive, I bet they would have gotten him to make an appearance to increase the nostalgia factor and thus, the second similarity to the lost world. At Lockwood's estate in Northern California, Claire meets Lockwood, his A.D. Lai Mills, and his granddaughter Maisie, whom Lockwood adopted after her parents died in a car accident. Lockwood and Mills are planning to move the dinosaurs to a new island sanctuary where they will live without human interference. Mills is concerned that locating Blue, the last living Velociraptor, will be difficult, so Claire convinces Owen Grady, Jurassic World's former Velociraptor handler, to join the mission and help locate Blue. When they find him, he's building a house in the middle of nowhere in a northern US type setting. Seems like they're trying to make him even more badass by giving him a Wolverine-type entrance in the film. They go for a beer in a bar much like the one in the Wolverine. And it's revealed that they dated for a while and they argue about who dumped whom. The rescue group arrives on Isla Nubler and meets head mercenary Ken Wheatley. In the command bunker, Claire and Franklin reactivate the park's trackers to locate dinosaurs, while Owen, Wheatley, Zia, and the mercenaries search for Blue. Upon finding her, the mercenaries shoot Blue and Owen with tranquilizers, abandoning Owen. After surviving a baryonyx attack in the bunkar, Claire and Franklin reunite with Owen as the volcano erupts, causing a dinosaur stampede. How did they get the hatch shut? Humans are not stronger than dinosaurs. Claire and Franklin use an abandoned gyrosphere ride to flee the stampede, but it plummets off a cliff and into the ocean. Owen rescues them from the sinking gyrosphere and the three sneak aboard the ship, where they reunite with Zia. This is the third time we are forced to look at imagery right from the Lost World, with all the dinosaurs crudely being captured. The ship, filled with captured dinosaurs, departs for the mainland while Isla Nubler is destroyed by the volcano. On the ship, Wheatley pulls out a stegosaurus tooth to add to his freaky hunter collection. How the fuck can you remove a dinosaur's tooth by yourself? And it wasn't a little dinosaur, either, it was a stegosaurus. And he added it to a collection of bigger teeth he had. Bullshit. Fucking sad shot of all the dinosaurs that were left at the dock dying. Fuck. The Brachiosaurus can swim. Why didn't it jump off the dock into the water? 
and they show this stupid nostalgic shot of it standing on its hind legs in an homage to the original JP. Again. Why would it do that on a dock with no trees, for it to have a reason to stand on its hind legs? At Lockwood's estate, Maisie learns Mills is secretly working with auctioneer Gunner Eversol to sell the captured dinosaurs, as well as a new hybrid dinosaur created by Dr. Henry Wu, the Indoraptor, created with DNA from the Indominus Rex and a Velociraptor. However, the Indoraptor is sociopathic, and the genetic material used to create it is gone. Wu plans to use DNA from Blue and the retrieved Indominus Rex bone to create improved versions of the Indoraptor. After Maisie warns Lockwood about the auction, Mills murders him. On board the ship, Owen and the gang find Blue but need a blood transfusion to save her. Zia says the only compatible blood comes from another carnivore with no more than three claws. Fifth time the movie copies the lost world. Remember the baby T-Rex they had to save? And what the fuck kind of logic is that? It's like saying a lion's blood will work in a transfusion for a house cat, and now we see a drugged T-Rex on the boat. Sixth time we're treated to something we already saw in the lost world. Still, at least the scene where they get the T-Rex blood is pretty tense. And it's something new. I mean, why do you come to see the latest JP movie? It's not just for the dinos, it's to see something new. But then the scene kinda gets ruined by the fact that Claire admits that she doesn't know anything about Owen's past. Didn't they mention that they were dating for a while earlier? I mean. Did the subject of Owen's past never come up? Owen and Claire are discovered in the convoy and locked in a cell at the estate, while Zia and Frank win evade capture. The auction begins, and several dinosaurs are sold and shipped. This whole scene reminds me of the scene in The Lost World where the guy from Engine is giving a presentation of the proposed mainland version of JP. This is where you see the full reveal of the Indoraptor. And it looks like a smaller version of the Indominus Rex. They show how the Indoraptor can kill a target by first pointing a laser beam at a target then sounding an audio signal that sends the Indoraptor into full-on beast mode. You already have a laser pointed at your target, why not just equip the laser to do you know? A gun? What's the point of sending a dinosaur to kill your target if you can just shoot them and you don't have to worry about your gun turning around and killing you afterwards? It's shit like this that got the movie a 56% on Rotten Tomatoes? Owen and Claire escape and find Maisie, who shows them the auction as the Indoraptor is brought on display in its cage. Owen liberates a Stygium lot to disrupt the auction, and the Indoraptor escapes its cage when Wheatley attempts to retrieve one of its teeth as a trophy. The Indoraptor kills Wheatley and Eversol. Fucking idiot. Again. How is he strong enough to remove the tooth? And the dinosaur plays dead? Okay fine. But smiling and moving its tail to the audience unbeknownst to Wheatley. Come on. It's smart but it's not human. Also. Fucking PG movies with no blood. Same thing happened to Clay in Age of Ultron. I get it that there can't be tons of blood spraying everywhere when people are dismembered. So don't show people being dismembered. What's better? Kids seeing blood or kids not worrying about losing a limb cause it doesn't appear to be that serious? Mills reveals to Owen and Claire that Maisie is actually a clone of Lockwood's deceased daughter, and she is the reason John Hammond, who was against human cloning, ended his partnership with Lockwood. Blue, freed by Zia accidentally hits a hydrogen cyanide tank, which leaks gas into the estate and threatens the unsold dinosaurs that are still in their cages. Maybe the gas was there as a sort of a crude lysine contingency? Here's where we see Zia and Franklin mess around with a computer at the estate, much like the scene in JP where Tim and Lex are sitting at the computer. In another JP ripoff, Maisie is chased by the Indoraptor, by the way. This has got to be the clumsiest dinosaur on earth cause it literally slams into everything like a baby learning to walk, and tries to hide in a dumb waiter, only the door won't close. This is exactly like the kitchen scene from JP where Lex tries to hide in the kitchen cupboard but the door won't close. Same type of door even. Of course, Maisie closes the door in time. Why the fuck can't the indoor after rip open the wooden door to the dumb waiter? when it was ripping through steel bars a minute ago. 
But then where does she go? Upstairs and she hides in bed. This kid is presented as a master sneak who spies on people all over the estate and she hides in a bed. She doesn't even pull the covers over her head. This is where you get the scene in the preview with the kids scared in their room. Doesn't work so much now when you make a character you build up to be too smart for her age look like a retard. And then there's JP Parallel number 3, a scene where the indoor raptor opens the latch of Maisie's window just like the raptor opened the door in the original JP. Owen comes in and hits the indoor raptor with three darts, making the total four darts if you count the dart that Wheatley hit it with. This thing is superhuman. Or super. Dinosaur, which it sort of is, but still, it should be successfully tranked by now. In typical Deus Ex Machina fashion, Blue shows up and jumps on the indoor raptor's back and starts battling it much like the raptor vs T-Rex battle in JP, which brings us to JP parallel number 4. Admittedly, this scene isn't as impressive as JP since there's only one raptor, not two, and the indoor raptor is smaller than the T-Rex. Blue then battles the indoor raptor, ultimately pushing it through a glass roof, where it is impaled on a triceratops skull on display in Lockwood's library. Then they follow that up with three reaction shots. Like we really need to see how Owen, Claire, and Maisie all react. I love Owen's reaction, by the way. It kinda looks like Chris Pratt really doesn't give a fuck anymore. Claire releases the dinosaurs from their cages. For what reason? I don't know. So they could riot before they die, another scene that, in this case, is simultaneously like the scene from JP where Nedry unlocks all the doors and at the same time is also like scene from the Lost World where they free the captive dinosaurs from their cages. Claire lacks the balls to release them from the estate, so they all kinda just stand there watching the dinos die. Then Maisie says fuck it and releases them so they won't die from the gas. I actually kinda like this part. Those damn dinos are living creatures and don't deserve to be euthanized like that. Mills attempts to escape with the Indominus Rex bone, but is eaten by the Tyrannosaurus and the Carnotaurus, during which the Tyrannosaurus destroys the bone. This started out as kind of a cool surprise, when it seemed like Mills was going to be eaten by a bunch of compus but then wasn't. But the way the T-Rex just appeared out of nowhere. It was too much like the original JP, which is like our fifth parallel to that movie. Owen and Claire leave with Maisie, while Blue and various freed dinosaurs, as well as pterosaurs and the Mosaurus, explore the world. Okay, the Mosaurus scene from the trailers happens here and in the movie it's treated like oh well, some surfers are gonna die. There's a pretty damn cool shot of a T-Rex roaring across from a lion at a zoo, which, when you think about it, would never happen. I hate how dinosaurs are hungry and will kill indiscriminately most of the time, then chill out when it's time to do a flashy pose. At this date, mercenaries recover Wu's genetic samples and ship them to an unknown location. Jeff Goldblum, as if he was telling this whole story himself the whole time, calls our planet Jurassic World. Cool way to end the movie and roll credits, just not as awesome as how they did it in The Dark Knight. I liked how they ended it with all the dinosaurs escaping and roaming free, but Jurassic World? Yeah. The dinosaurs won't take over when there's only 7 species of them and what looks to be only like 50 or so dinos in total. One nuke could easily take them all out if they launched it at the estate just after all the dinos escaped. In a post credits scene, a group of pterosaurs fly around the replica Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas. And that's it. Is it worth going to see in theaters? If you like The Force Awakens, I would say yes. If you're looking for a movie that isn't essentially snippets of all the cool scenes from the first two JP films just like The Force Awakens did to Star Wars, I would say no. Is it better than Jurassic World? Hell yes that movie was a piece of shit. GameGov TV and Bradcats have been collaborating on YouTube since the summer of 2017. We produce dozens of game reviews, comedy sketches, and music videos together. But we've never actually met. We want to fly Pat Andrew, the resident game god, out to local Utah 
to have him meet us in person and have him stay with us for one week. The $500 is strictly to cover a flight from Toronto, Ontario to Salt Lake City, Utah. When we are finally united, we will spend an entire week together collaborating and filming as many comedy sketches, music videos, and game reviews as we can. We will also try as many YouTube challenges as humanly possible without injuring ourselves too bad. What up, Rad Cats? What up, my bros from Idaho? Bros in Idaho! Bros in Idaho! Bros in Idaho! Here we go! Thanks again to our girls from Check it out. Come on, donate. We love you. We love all of you.